it's the last month of the year and we've still got a couple more this week in bevies to end it out. Starting off, of course, with the fact that Bevy 0.15 is out now. Go check out the release notes and the migration guide. And if you want an audio visual tour of the release, there's a YouTube video on this channel as well, which I will link in the description. The release candidate process seems to be working well as many crates have already updated to support 0.15, although be sure to save some space for those that haven't. Many ecosystem crates are maintained by people in their free time. We won't be listing all of the crates that updated, so check in with your dependencies if you're looking to upgrade a 0.14 project to 0.15. With that, we've got some exciting showcases this week, including a Vaporwave demo, a throwback to water bottle flipping, and exciting upcoming features for avian physics. And with that, we're going to kick it off with some minions. The player in this one leads around minions who destroy incoming enemies with their fireball spell. There's some really nice particle effects in this one, so definitely go check it out. And it's always nice to see people upping their art game. This is some new pixel art for this cozy game, incorporating various elements of nature as well as health bars, mini maps, and more. And the Dark Omen engine had some progress, which is a Warhammer Dark Omen engine that now includes mini maps, magic point systems, particle effects, and more. And going from pixel art to even lower fidelity, this is 2D ray casting powered visibility mechanics. The new mesh for this one is generated every frame. There are plenty of resources for how to implement this yourself on the internet, including Red Blob games and more. So search for 2D visibility if you're looking for that. And then we get into some 3D. This is a murmuration simulation using Bevy 0.15 RC3. Crates used in this one include Bevy Spatial and a low poly model of a roasted turkey. Up next, we've got a really cool vaporwave aesthetic in Bevy using shaders. It parses custom GLTF attributes generated in Blender to mark visible edges for more customizable wireframe look and allows for solid wireframes. You should check out the YouTube video if you wanna see more about this one or the Wasm demo linked on the site. We've seen Varg a couple times and it now has a Steam page. Varg is a love letter to the classic MS-DOS boomer shooter genre with a modern investigative twist. Set in the distant year of 1996, the game is loosely inspired by Brazil's most iconic UFO case. And from 3D back to 2D, this is loading a single really big tiled file with spawning dropping tiles based on a quad tree system. The range is artificially reduced to show the effect in this video, and the user will never actually be able to see the loading. There were a couple of conversations about the fixed update through the Bevy 0.14 to 15 cycle, and this shows off a built-in transform interpolation and extrapolation support for avian physics, powered by the new Bevy transform interpolation crate. And it can be hard to choose a first project when you're just getting started, but this person's first project was the game of life, which turns out like it worked out pretty well. And there are a few different space sims, specifically the Big Space plugin seems to be pretty popular. This is the result of the Big Space plugin with a Keplerian orbit physics system and a custom multi-node post-processing path to enable lens flares. The next scene is going to be much brighter than this one, so keep that in mind if you're <laughs> in the dark right now. This is a Bevy 0.15 release candidate number three based jigsaw puzzle, which is also open sourced on GitHub. And it's always a good week when we see some Jarl updates. Jarl rewrote one of its oldest components, the Z ordering system. The new system is based on layers, static dynamic sorting groups, and pivot point components. The pronunciation of Jarl is left up to players' interpretations. It could be just another roguelike, or you could pronounce it as Jarl as well. Bevy Actuate implementations have seen a couple of updates. In this case, we have a skill bar made with Bevy Mod Actuate. While Bevy Cobweb UI powers Mercator's menu system, the implementation includes hot reloadable UI elements and animation. Our next game is just showing off more work on enemy pathfinding and basic combat. It is a Bevy roguelike, but it, we don't have much more information on it than that. Something we do have information on is Torp, which is a laid back colony simulator set in the Viking age that has been in development for a year and a half. The game is still under heavy development, and this is the first reveal. There's a much longer YouTube video showing off the mechanics and the gameplay, which I encourage you to go look at on YouTube, link on the site. And Bottle Flip Dreams had a demo. Bottle Flip Dreams is a throwback to the golden days of bottle flipping. It's a physics-based bottle flipping platformer built with avian physics. The game has a demo on itch, but the control scheme is meant for mobile devices. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this one ship on app stores, and you might want to also view it on your mobile device if you go to play the demo. And finally in the showcases this week, we've got a space flight simulation. This is a space flight simulation game featuring a vast star system and realistic orbital mechanics. There's a whole bunch of cool shots in this one, including beautiful looking planets and even rings around them. 
And we are going to touch on a couple crates this week, although the vast majority of crates were just version bumps to 0.15. I've plucked a few that actually do have new features or were unrelated to the 0.15 release this weekend. First up, we've got Actuate, which hit 0.11 this week. Actuate is a framework for declarative programming in Rust with support for Bevy UI and scenes. 0.11 brings more concise syntax, borrowed observers, and more. An interesting new crate is Bevy GL. XF loader. This is particularly interesting for those of you that are waiting for BSN and looking for solutions in the meantime. GLXF is an extremely simple JSON based scene format that essentially just lets you arrange GLTFs or other GLXF files in a nested hierarchy, name them, and apply transforms to them. Bevy GLXF loader implements a Bevy components extension that allows you to add arbitrary components to nodes so that you can use it as an alternative to BSN. Do note that currently this feels like a temporary workaround until we get BSN and likely the author of this crate will move on to BSN when that comes out. For those that aren't aware, BSN is Bevy Scene Notation, which is being actively worked on. And finally, we've got eGUI Taffy. eGUI Taffy integrates Taffy, the same layout system Bevy UI uses, with eGUI to enable support for Flexbox and Grid layouts, which will be nice for those of you familiar with CSS. The integration boasts hot reloading of UI for development. And of course, this being the last week of the 0.15 release candidate cycle, most of the merge pull requests were small bug fixes, if they were bug fixes at all. But we do have that full list on the website. And if you're looking to get involved at a deeper level, we've got the open pull requests this week, as well as the issues that were open this week, which could be great starting points for you to get involved. That's it for me this week. I'm back to Advent of Code. If you're participating, hang out for those videos as well. And I'll see you for another This Week in Bevy next week.